Good morning. My name is Hee Jong Seo, and this presentation will discuss the characterization of Late Triassic Sherwood Sandstone Reservoir and the Mercia Mudstone Seal in the southern East Irish Sea Basin. I would like to thank my supervisors, Professor Gary Hampson from Imperial College London and Simon Bestweatherick from ENI UK Limited. Ben Minchell and Benjamin Franklin have also supported me throughout the project. The aim of this project is to evaluate the suitability of significantly hydrocarbon depleted fields in the southern East Irish Sea Basin as potential sites for carbon capture and storage, or CCS. In order to capture, redistribute and safely store atmospheric CO2 in deep geological trap formations, it is crucial to assess the reservoir seal and trap systems of the field. The right diagram outlines the objectives. First is the reservoir characterization. The reservoir in which CO2 will be stored should be evaluated in terms of its storage efficiency and capacity. Second is the seal characterization. A successful CCS requires assurance of CO2 confinement, in which the most significant factor is the seal potential of the cap rock. The seal potential is defined by seal integrity, capacity and geometry. Third is the structural analysis. In order to prevent CO2 leakage through the fault plane, clay smear, fault reactivation potential, and fault juxtaposition should be analysed. This study imposes considerable significance, environmentally and economically. CCS provides a short-term and relatively cheap means of climate change abatement, and economic benefits include creating new jobs and reducing cost of electricity and consumer bills. Map A depicts the location of the southern East RUC basin within the UK and map B represents CO2 storage licensed region within the white outline. The project is focused on the Hamilton North, Hamilton East and Hamilton gas fields as shown in red, as well as the Douglas and Lennox oil and gas fields shown in green. The tectonic stratigraphic chart on the right illustrates the stratigraphy, petroleum systems and tectonic events of the region. The principal source rock is in the Marian Holywell Shale, containing an amorphous type to kerogen. The main reservoir is the Lower Triassic Sherwood Sandstone Group, which consists of the Omsker and Sainsbury Sandstone Formation. Lastly, the seal is the mid to late Triassic Mercia Mudstone Group of alternating mudstone and halite units formed in a player lake environment. The core fasci scheme analysis depicts six main fasci systems representing the reservoir and seal. Reservoir fasci consist of four aeolian, sapco, bluevial, and floodplain systems whereas the seal fasces consist of the player lake and crevice systems. Furthermore, the wireline fasci scheme has simplified the core fasci scheme based on four main logs, gamma ray, sonic, density and neutron logs. Different cutoff values were applied to each log, which helped identify whether the lithology is sand rich or mud rich. Overall, three wireline fasces were identified. First is the player lake system, shown in figures A and B. Halite in purple shows extremely low gamma ray readings, while mudstone in blue shows very high gamma ray readings. Second is the fluvial system, which consists of fluvial sandstones in yellow and floodplain mudstones in green, as shown in figure C. Sands have low gamma ray readings and higher sonic values compared to mudstones. Also, for sands, the density is on the left while neutron is on the right. Last is the Aeolian system, which comprises of Aeolian dunes in orange and Aeolian subcafages in brown, as shown in figure D. Based on the facies associations and classifications, north to south and west to east correlations were conducted. As shown by the map, five wells from the Hamilton North, Hamilton East and Hamilton Fields were correlated from north to south, which is shown by the orange line. Additionally, Four wells in the south of Hamilton area were correlated from west to east, shown by the blue line. In this presentation, only the north to south correlation will be discussed. This is the north to south correlation panel of the Sherwood Sandstone Group, displaying a layer cake architecture of alternating aeolian and fluvial sandstones with a total of six zones. The Sherwood Sandstone Group consists of the Sainsby Sandstone and the Umskirt Sandstone Formation, which is divided into three members. Frotsham in Zone 8, Delamere in Zone 9, and Thurstaston in Zone 10. The pie charts show the reservoir zonation scheme or the fascist distribution. As shown, the Omsk sandstone is aeolian dominated. In terms of CO2 injection, the main challenge would be the heterogeneity of the reservoir that primarily controls the storage efficiency. 
After the frotial member becomes fully saturated with CO2, it will then flow into the delaval member, which has intubated floodplain mudstones that may act as a barrier to CO2 flow. Therefore, its intermediate heterogeneity in zone 9 may reduce the storage efficiency. Moreover, the frotial member thins towards the south, which may lower the storage capacity. To further evaluate the reservoir quality, core data on porosity and permeability were classified into members shown in the left graph and fascias shown in the right graph. The frotial member is almost identical to the aeolian fascias, suggesting it is aeolian dominated. Its permeability values are generally between 100 to 3000 millidarcy, and its average porosity value is about 19%, which makes it an exceptional reservoir. The delamel member in yellow is almost very similar to the fluvial and floodplain fascias, which makes it fluvial dominated. The sparsity of the data shows intermediate heterogeneity, but due to relatively high porosity and permeability, it still remains an outstanding reservoir. Lastly, the thirstaston member in green overlaps with the fluvial and aeolian fascias, but it has great uncertainty due to its limited data set. This is the north to south correlation panel of the Mercia mudstone group displaying a layer cake architecture of alternating mudstone and halite units with a total of eight zones. The Roswell halite and mitop halite units are the ultimate seal, closest to the Sherwood sandstone group. However, they're relatively thin and disappear towards the south, which increases the risk of CO2 seepage in the southern region. Although the mudstones are relatively consistent in thickness, they cannot be as effective as the halite units. The southern area is likely to have CO2 seepage into the Anstel mudstone and even further into the Blackpool and Cleverley mudstones, due to its sandy and silty nature as shown in the core data of Douglas Field. However, Due to the multiple overlying halite units, especially the prizzle halite, which is constantly thick throughout the region, it is extremely unlikely that CO2 will escape to the surface. These four 3D depositional block models represent different fascias or zones of correlation. The first block shows the Mercia mudstone group, which comprises of eight zones of lacustrine, clear lake, and subka environment. The climate is dry and arid, with ephemeral streams and lakes that are occasionally flooded due to marine incursion. The second block shows a semi-arid climate, with coexistence of aeolian and fluvial environments. However, the extensive desertification forms aeolian dunes and ridges, while occasional flooding of fluvial bodies form a sheet flood deposits. This gives the ratio of channel fill to sheet flood 1. The third block represents a wet fluvial dominated environment, with abundance of braided channels with rarely preserved floodplain deposits. The channels are both multilateral and multi-storey, which increases the connectivity of sand bodies and flow efficiency of CO2. The ratio of channel fill to floodplain is very high, representing high net to gross. Lastly, the fourth block shows an equally wet environment, yet the flow of energy is lower, resulting in lower rates of avulsion and lateral migration. The floodplain is very well preserved as shown. This model shows an integration of all zones of different environments. Zones 9 and 11 are in the most proximal area, followed by zones 8, 10, 12 and 13 within a transitional area, and zones 0 to 7 in the most distal area. The rifting and subsidence have caused marine incursion to occur and slowly submerged the zones 8 to 13. Therefore, there would have been a specific time period where Sherwood Sandstone and Mercia Mudstone would have coexisted. This means they have a gradational contact, where the mixed fluvial aeolian environment was slowly overtaken by the lacustrine systems. The major fluvial paleo direction is south-southeast to north-northwest, whereas the aeolian paleo flow is from east to west. Additionally, the key factors controlling the depositional environment are the climate and tectonic changes such as extension and subsidence. The Hamilton field trap consists of north to south trending horse block structure with the bounding folds on the east and west. These two bounding folds converge towards the south of the field, as shown in this 3D fold models. The eastern fold is truncated by its western counterpart and subsequently terminates. These north-south folds are a result of an east-west extensional phase during the lower Permian. The cross-section through well 110-1301 shows four seismic horizon markers which has generated the depth structure map, shown in the next slide. 
The depth structure map of Sherwood Top is shown in this slide, which was produced by creating surfaces based on horizon interpretations using several seismic techniques, such as a seismic ghost. As a result, full seismic attribute maps were created to enhance the structural features of the region, such as the edge detection, deep angle, variance, and deep illumination maps. There are several seismic interpretations. Firstly, both bounding faults of the horse block were well depicted in all the seismic attribute maps. The major faults terminate at very shallow depth up to the quaternary seabed sediments. Secondly, a greater structuration or faulting is observed in the south due to the convergence of the bounding faults. Thirdly, there are several minor east-west north-south trending faults within the Hamilton field which may suggest reactivation of the fault network during the second phase of east-west extension that resumed in the lower Jurassic. Lastly, there are northeast-southwest and northwest-southeast trending faults outside the Hamilton field, which may indicate the reactivation of Caledonian basement faults. The eastern bounding fault plane consists of hanging wall and foot wall. When they're juxtaposed, it is crucial to analyze if there is a sand-to-sand -sand contact where CO2 can escape. As shown by these Allen diagrams, the lowest section of the showed sandstone in the foot wall is juxtaposed against the upper section of the showed sandstone in the hanging wall, therefore a sand-to-sand -sand contact shown by the brown dashed line with dotted pattern. However, this is below the gas water contact, thus not part of the potential CO2 storage interval. Therefore, as shown by the black dashed line, the majority of the reservoir is juxtaposed against the seal. In the western fault plain, the reservoir in the foot wall is completely juxtaposed against the mudstone and halite seal units of the hanging wall. Therefore, both the eastern and western faults satisfy the conditions to form an adequate juxtaposition seal for carbon capture and storage. These are 3D fault plane models showing the shale gauge ratio calculated using the algorithm defined by yielding in 1997. This provides a method of predicting fault seal potential for a clay smear. The volume of shell was calculated using the linear response equation with the gamma ray values provided for each well. The proxy visual value of halite is set to 100% to displace impermeable nature. The eastern and western faults show reservoir seal juxtaposition in white dash line, which display an average SGR value of around 50%, shown by its green color. This value indicates moderate clay smear potential. However, the ceiling potential increases towards the north due to the presence of thicker halite smeared onto the fault plain. There are several conclusions drawn from this study. Firstly, in terms of reservoir storage efficiency and capacity, the Omsker sandstone formation is an excellent reservoir, particularly the Aeolian-dominated fraction member. Secondly, the Mercia mudstone group provides an effective overlying caprock whereby the multi-layered, unfractured, and clean halite units will ultimately seal. However, CO2 seepage is expected in the lower endstone mudstone formation due to its sandy and silty nature, particularly in the south. Lastly, the fault-bound host structure provides a suitable trap for buoyant fluids, whereby the reservoir is completely juxtaposed against the seal. The clay smear potential is moderate and increases towards the north. Therefore, the findings of this study propose that outstanding reservoir characteristics and a substantial seal present the Hamilton field as an excellent candidate for carbon capture and storage. In order to further expand the understanding of the area and reduce the risk of CO2 leakage, the following topics have been identified for future research. An in-depth study of the current stress fields of the East Irish Sea Basin is required, as it is crucial for understanding the possibility of fault reactivation that may cause CO2 leakage. Furthermore, an investigation of the CO2 storage capacity in the Hamilton field is needed, considering the reservoir depth required for CO2 in a supercritical condition. The uppermost showed sandstone group is above 800 meters, which will substantially reduce the storage volume and increase the risk of CO2 leakage. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.